let's take a look at operating systems in this video. So, what is an operating system? Well, it's software that runs in the background of all modern computer systems, whether that's a desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone, etc. The operating system makes it possible to communicate with all the software and hardware that makes up that computer system. It allows us to tell the computer what to do. And the operating system manages a variety of functions to help us do this. Without an operating system, we would find most computers very unfriendly to use. Most people would in fact find them impossible to use without an operating system to guide us and to help us control all those devices. An example of an operating system is Microsoft Windows, Apple iOS or Apple Mac OS, Google Android and Linux. So we said that an operating system handles a variety of functions. Let's look at those functions in a bit more detail. We have the user interface, we have file management, the management of hardware and peripherals, processor management, the running of software, interrupt and error handling, security, memory management, and network communications. So let's take a look at the user interface. So the operating system provides a way for the user to interact with the computer. Historically, this was done with a command line interface, which used just text only, but most modern computers now will use a graphical user interface or a GUI to allow us to interact with the computer. A GUI has windows, icons, menus, pointers as a way of interacting with the computer. Another feature of an operating system is the management of files. The operating system creates a file system that organizes files into directories on the computer. These names are going to a lookup table and the locations are remembered. It provides programs with a consistent way of storing and retrieving data from storage. Common features include the ability to let us name files, sort files into order, delete files, move files, copy files, and so on. Okay, next up we've got the management of hardware and peripherals. So the operating system controls all devices that are connected to the computer and it tells them how they are to interact and to operate. Examples could include a hard drive, portable storage, USB ports, and so on. Each peripheral, so each device you connect to a computer, will have its own rules that dictate how it can transmit data to the computer. In order not to get confused, the operating system will use something called device drivers to learn how to use those peripherals and to allow communications to take place effectively. Okay, the next feature then of an operating system is processor management. The processor, the brains of the computer, needs someone or something to manage it. And the operating system will manage the processor. When a program gets opened, the operating system will find it on the hard drive and load the instructions into RAM, into the temporary memory. It will then tell the CPU, the processor, that it can start to execute that program. The operating system will also manage the sharing of processor time. If there's more than one program that needs time with the processor, it's down to the operating system to prioritize and to manage that time appropriately. Okay, running of software. We all know really that to run software, we need an operating system installed first and then the software is installed on top of the operating system. Doing this allows um, programs to benefit from the features of an operating system such as the existing communications and connected hardware and file management systems. Without the operating system you wouldn't be able to install programs to work. Okay, leading on from processor management we have something called interrupt handling. Now we know that several programs can be stored in RAM at the same time but only one at a time can be um, 
processed by the CPU. In order to give the illusion of multitasking, we use interrupt signals. So each task, each uh, program is fighting for attention and it's up to the operating system to prioritize those interruptions and to give the most important task, the most pressing task to the processor to complete while the rest go into a queue. So the operating system is constantly prioritizing interruptions to ensure the most appropriate and pressing tasks are dealt with by the CPU. But because this happens hundreds or thousands of times a second, uh, we don't notice this. We just feel as if all these programs are all working together at the same time. But in fact, they're not. It's a constant juggling act. Security. So an operating system has an important role to play in the security of your computer as well. If you've got several people using the same computer, then the operating system will allow you to create separate user accounts and passwords. And it's the operating system that enforces those uh, rights to ensure that you don't see other people's work and vice versa. An operating system will let you allow access rights on files. And special utility programs now come packaged with operating systems, for example, firewalls to help keep your computer secure. One of our final features then is memory management. So the operating system will be loading programs in and out of memory and it will allocate what it believes is an appropriate amount of memory to those programs to allow them to run. It keeps track of the memory and what's currently in use. So the operating system will decide who gets what and also what to do if there's not enough memory to go around. And finally, most computers these days are connected to the internet or some other form of network. The operating system has its role to play in ensuring that uh, network devices can communicate with the computer and the right programs on that computer.